Hey there, I'm Annie Dickerson. And I'm Susan Elliott. And today's episode of the Life and Money Show, we are going to look at financial wellness and financial self-care in a new light. We talk a lot in this day and age about taking care of our bodies, exercising, eating right, getting the smoothies, getting kale into your kids, something I think (laughs) a lot about. But what we don't talk about is the kind of things that we need to do to maintain a higher level of financial wellness. We're talking health here, but as it relates to finances, and we're going to give you a blueprint, a very concrete step-by-step process to be able to check in on your financial wellness regularly and maintain the level of health here that allows you to live a life by design. I think it's like an element of like welcoming money into our lives in a regular day-to-day thing. I think I've felt the most unwell in the type periods of my life where I've like shoved money to the side and been like, okay, I'm just going to take care of my bills and we're just going to set everything up. Then I'm just going to forget about it because I don't want to deal with it. It's like, that's as if you're taking your whole bottle of vitamins right at the same time. Right. <laughs> that doesn't work. <laughs> yes. Right. And I, I think when I can bring money into the conversation where I am welcoming it into this, like, how does it make me feel? How does it um, turn into stress in my life? It allows that money to be in a, the conversation along with my wellness. And mm-hmm. I think that's how I start to think about financial wellness. Here's the thing with financial wellness as well is it's not about the amount of money you have in the bank. There are people with millions, even billions of dollars in their accounts, Mm -hmm. in their net worth. And they never feel like they have enough. Yeah. Yeah. They're constantly feeling uneasy. Yeah. Yes. So to me, wellness is really that relationship between you and your, in this case, your financial wellness, your, your relationship between you and your money and how you feel about it and how it impacts your life. Because I know times in my life when I had very little in the bank account, but I felt really good about my money and where I was at and where I was going. So to me, that's kind of wellness in a nutshell. I like the phrase that it's it's a state of well-being that's achieved when you know what you have. You know where every, all the money's at, how it's moving, how it's flowing in and out of your life. You know where you're headed. So you have this kind of idea of you know your long-term plans, your long-term vision, and you're taking the steps regularly, those preventative steps of, yes, keeping my financial wellness moving, the gears turning. And the ultimate part is that you feel good about it. So it, it, it there's a the feeling element, I think, is what we neglect typically when we talk about finances. You look at your numbers, you make a plan, you set the plan, you do the plan, and then you, you're you done. And if you don't integrate those feelings part of it, you could just be going off on someone else's plan or you could stop taking steps towards your plan because you're ignoring how it makes you feel. Yeah, I think that's so wise is that it's really, I mean, you can make a financial plan, you can check off all the boxes, you can go work with a financial planner, but at the end of the day, you might be going through all those things, but you feel so anxious or you're so unsure or you're just hiding from all the problems. That creates a level of financial distress. And so that's what Mm -hmm. we're trying to bring awareness to and bring out in the open so that we can have a conversation about it. And more importantly, get you to a point where you can start to assess your own level of financial wellness. Because Susan, as you mentioned, this life is a roller coaster ride. There's never a, we're just talking Um, about this. There's never a single thing in life where you can check it off and be like, well, I'm done with that thing. I don't have to learn any more about that. I don't have to worry about that for the rest of my life. Nothing. (laughs) Annie, let's talk a little bit about some flags that are like, what does financial unwellness look like? I think that this will really help the listener. Yeah. So unwellness, I mean, we hit on one of them, um, which was this incongruence between the amount of money you have in your bank account and how you feel about it. So for example, having a lot of money or whatever you think a lot of money is in the bank, but feeling really insecure about it. And I I can tell you, I'm the first one. My husband has felt this way. I have felt this way. And we look at their bank account and we're like, we have more money now than we did back when our 20s for sure. But why are we yeah. feeling this way? Why are we feeling insecure? Yeah. And so that's a big big clue that maybe something is a little bit misaligned. 
And I would say one way to do that is, like you said, compare yourself to your your yourself in your twenties. That's a great big flag, like, yeah. and and that's a great way to just say, like, oh, I'm doing pretty well. I'm actually like taking care of my financials, wellness to some degree. So give yourself a little credit for that, typically. And and maybe you're not. Maybe you're in more debt than you were then, and that's okay too. But to be able to also say, like, oh, I have plenty in my emergency savings fund to live off of for the next five or six months. Like that's a huge win in this. And in a way to say like, to check yourself with that scarcity, because the word scarcity is like, well, I don't know if I'm feeling scarce or not. Well, if you if you can look at a number and say like, well, actually, we'd be fine for six months. Can I change this ship around in six months? Well, probably I can do some pretty big things to move the ship around. So we're, we're kind of fine. And that's a way to check that scarcity um, mindset in you a little bit. I would say not yeah. also also not having a clear plan for your money is an element of financial unwellness. So if if you don't really know like if you had an extra $10,000 right now to invest what you would do with it to fit into your diversified investing plan um then that might be a good sign that you need to have a little bit more structure inside your plan or you might be a little bit financially unwell in terms of planning, not having a plan at all or like not um, knowing where that plan is going to take you. Well, let's jump into helping the listener get some really concrete steps. So the yes. Life and Money Show Financial Wellness Blueprint. Kick it off, Annie. So, um, all right. I mentioned there are five pieces. So I'll start with the first one, um, which is very simple, is just to define what financial wellness means to you. And we've talked about it a lot between me and Susan, but for you... Financial wellness might be something different. Maybe it's a feeling or maybe it's a number in your bank account. Maybe it's having a steady stream of income or maybe it's having a certain investment portfolio size or whatever it is, but pinpoint what that target is and then figure out what the gap is between where you are and that vision of financial wellness. And this is where it could come in again and again because your vision of financial wellness today might be different from what it was, let's say back in your 20s, or what it will be 10 years from now, 20 years from now. So it's good to continually reflect on what financial wellness might be. That's great. Mm -hmm. So number two is figuring out the big rocks in your way. Figure out what stresses you the most around money and 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 think about like, what are immediate solutions that you could do to alleviate that? Maybe just immediate actions for longer term solutions you could take. But these big rocks are are really kind of like, probably what you, you see and you just turn around and walk the other way when it comes to financial wellness. But like, let's take a look at them. So then um, the third thing uh, in the financial wellness blueprint, after you know what financial wellness means to you and you've figured out and tackled a few of the big rocks in your way, then the next thing is to get really familiar with your money. So often the fears around money come from not knowing where your money is or not knowing where it's coming from, where it's going out, when the bills are due, what's what's what. And so this next step is really about cozying up with your money and getting really in there and figuring out, okay, I've got this pile of money here, this pile there. Oh, I forgot I have this old retirement account here. Okay. Let me move that over here. And okay. What about my spouses? Okay. They've got this account here, this account there. Uh, what about insurance? What does that look like? What about taxes? And so really getting familiar with all the different things that touch your money, not just the amount in your bank account, but all that having that holistic look at um, your money. I think step number four is to create short-term and long-term goals. So as you gain confidence about how your money's coming in, where it's going out, think about some short-term goals. Maybe these are month monthly goals, maybe it's within the, the next year that you can do to help yourself feel a little bit better about your finances, to uplift that financial wellness status. And so go back to what you want to feel about your emotions and what you want to, you know, if maybe it's you don't want to feel guilty around spending every dollar. Well, if you know how much is coming in and how much is going out, maybe you can say, you know what, this is my budget for my 
self-care every month. And I am going to feel great about spending that money because I know I have it coming in and I know we're taking care of ourselves. So you're you're going back to those feelings and you're actually making the short-term plan to uplift them, to feel better about your finances. Also take long-term action because long-term um, or, or create long-term goals, I should say. And then you're taking the small steps to get towards those goals because financial wellness is this long-term journey. Um, we do want to be working towards retirement. We're going to have to take care of ourselves as we age uh, some way or another. And taking those steps now can really uplift the way you feel now. People think money is the be-all and end-all, but I was listening to a podcast um, where this, this young entrepreneur, she started a company at 21, sold it by 26 and had hundreds of millions of dollars within a five year period, hundreds of millions of dollars. And so then the host actually asked her, well, you know, does that impact your relationships now? Your new friend, she's a single mom. And, you know, does that impact your relationships and your friendships? Because people might, you know, people might just want to come into your life for your money. She said, absolutely. And so it's not like if you have this high dollar amount in your bank account, it solves all your problems. It just brings on new problems. And each of us in this life are here for different learnings and we're on a different path. So we're not here to compare. We're here to help all of us to elevate and to reach that financial, uh, that level of financial wellness where you can feel really good. So that's our hope for you. And we're so grateful that you joined us for this conversation. Susan, any last words before we wrap? I would just say like, this is a community thing. And this podcast was a rock for me in the early days. I'm so happy to be here. Please share with us to go over to Instagram, share with us what it feels like to have a financial win. What does financial wellness mean to you? We would love to hear from you. We will give you a shout out on the podcast um, sometimes. So go over to at Good Egg Investments and share your story. Tag us in it. Um, And we'd love to hear what other people are doing to uplift their financial wellness.